Sunday was a great day for the majority of the handicappers here at the site, especially those with major wager releases. And I'll recap who's hot and who's not in just a moment. Plus, I've got another free pick coming your way following a 4-0 NFL sweep on Sunday as I not only cashed in with my 15-dime best bet with the Baltimore Ravens, but gave you free pick winners on the Chicago Bears, on the Houston Texans, and the Indianapolis Colts out right over the Miami Dolphins. And that was on the heels of going 4-1 and one with my uh, college football selection elections this week, hitting a 15-dime best bet with Kansas State on Saturday, and then going 3-1 and one with the free picks as well. So that free play on the Saints-Eagles over under coming up in a minute, plus an NBA free selection as well. Hi, everyone. Al DeMarco here, and this, of course, is going to be your Monday video report. You know, yesterday and so far this week in the NFL has been one of those weeks where the favorites have certainly had their way here in Vegas. You know, for many, many weeks, it's been the underdogs ruling the roost, and I've always said that only two things happen when the underdogs cash in at an insane rate, and they're both bad things. One, uh, gamblers are generally losing their shirts because, fact is, just like many handicappers, you're inclined to always gravitate toward the favorites. And the other thing is that sports books here in Vegas and offshore, they are making a fortune because gamblers generally gravitate toward playing favorites. But so many times when you see the underdogs come up with monster weeks, like a couple of weeks ago when they had 11 covers, for example, then you'll have gamblers coming out of the woodwork saying, hey, you know, I only bet games if I can get points. I only bet the underdogs. I stay away from the chalks. That's why I make money. Oh, that's total bullshit and malarkey. Seriously, come on. Let's be honest with ourselves here because at the end of the year, it always evens out. Law of averages, guys, it always evens out over the long haul. So underdogs will go on their little runs. Favorites will go on their little runs. And at the end of the year, one side or the other will be somewhere between four and 10 games over 500 over an 18-week schedule. So again, you know, it's just like a guy I used to work with years ago that was a handicapper in baseball. All he did was release underdogs. Every single day, he'd release three dogs. And the next day, he'd be crowing about the fact, I scored last night with the Cincinnati Reds plus a dollar seventy. Yeah, but you lost the other two dogs. <laughs> I mean, it's a big deal. You won one dog, you lost two dogs. In baseball, at least you had a losing night. That's how it rolls, okay? Sometimes dogs are simply dogs with fleas, and they shouldn't be scratched. Now, it happens to be that so far this week, favorites are 9-4 and four against the spread. Ironically, all four underdogs that covered won their games outright. Colts, Steelers, Bucks, Panthers, okay? Now, as you know, on Monday nights, the underdogs were on quite a roll. Five straight winners until last Monday night when we had a dog with fleas, the Arizona Cardinals playing San Francisco, and the 49ers dominated and rolled to the easy win and cover, ending the dog's five-game winning streak on Monday night. So we'll talk more about the Monday night action in just a moment. In terms of the total, let me just quickly tell you uh, and actually quickly say congratulations going out to Scott Delaney, who yesterday hit the first ever 150-dime release of his career in the NFL not only that, but he's now won six of the past seven days as he scored yesterday with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A one-point road dog winning by 10 at uh, the Raiders. Boy, that game gave you a little bit of agita late in the contest when it was suddenly a three-point game when the Raiders scored three touchdowns in the uh, fourth quarter. But thankfully, Tampa extended the margin with Doug Martin scoring with a minute 47 to play to make it a comfortable 10-point win. But still, if you didn't have some gray hair, you would have had some watching the fourth quarter of that game as it was getting late. Uh, uh, and congratulations to Scott. He has now won six of the past seven days. And in that seven-day stretch, $10 betters have won $3,385. And tonight, another big play from him. 50-dime winner number two in a row in Philadelphia, New Orleans. The side, his first 50-dime play this weekend, of course, was Oklahoma uh, by 15 points with the cover over Iowa State on Saturday. Uh, Anthony Red won yet again yesterday as he scored with his 30-dime winner number six out of eight on the Colts outright over the Dolphins today. He goes for NFL winner number 10 out of 12 and Monday night winner, number five out of six, and it's a 50-dime release on the Eagles and Saints. He's won 11 out of 13 40-dime plays in the NFL, and this play is even stronger tonight. Chris Jordan won yet again yesterday in the NFL as well. 500-star NFL winner, number two in a row with the Texans. That on the heels of Thursday's 300-star teaser winner with the Chargers and the over against Kansas City. $1 bettors in the NFL have won 50 
$15,495 following Chris's betting advice dating back to 2007. So not a bad long-term run there for him. Um, Steve Budin. His uh, one crew had a monster weekend. They had their first college football release of the season. It was a 50-dime winner on... Um, I do this off the top of my head, guys. I have no notes. O Oregon. 50-dime winner on Oregon. And then they came back with their first NFL play of the season, and it was a 100-dime winner on the Houston Texans yesterday. And, boy, there was another game that if you look at the box score, you go, how did not the Houston Texans win that game by 35 points? I'm sorry. I just look at the Texans. I only used them as a free pick yesterday. I was not going to invest 10.5 points with that team, and a game went off at 11 anyway because I just look at that team, and you look at the potential, and you look at the personnel, and you go, how did this team get blown out at home by Green Bay? I mean, and then turn around and blow out Baltimore. I don't get it. Uh, how did they struggle against the Jets and the Bills? Super Bowl contenders? I don't know. I see Super Bowl pretenders. Um, now, the only guy that had a big play yesterday that did not come through was Trace Adams. Had his very first triple your wager, 3,000 star release. It was on the Cowboys. You saw the end of that game last night. I can't think of the cornerback's name for Dallas, but you want to talk about a GOAT? Two horrendous plays by that cornerback last night in the closing minutes. Uh, missed tackle. I mean, I don't know how the hell he missed that tackle. Christ almighty. Don't they teach you in peewee football how to make the proper tackle in open field? I mean, instead he's flailing around with his arms trying to do a leg tackle. My God, what a joke. And uh, then, of course, was called for a costly pass interference call. So he was about the only guy that was losing last night. Among the high handicappers tonight to talk about, Jeff Benton, guys. He has been on a phenomenal roll. Over the past 37 days, $10 betters have won $4,630. Five weeks, they've won $4,630. He's won each of the past five days. On uh, Sunday, he hit with a uh, 40 dime uh, play on um, Tampa Bay and Oakland, going over the posted total. Uh, Saturday, he hit his fourth consecutive 75 dime plays. Had four of them this season, two in the NFL, two in college football. He's won them both. It was Wake Forest. And tonight, he's upping the ante. Previous high in his career was a 100 dime play. One and only 150 dime. Monday night game of the year, the Eagles Saints side. To put it in perspective for you, 4 0 with those 75 dime plays in college and pro combined this season. This play is twice as strong. His two previous 75 dime winners in the NFL. He had the Bears in their road route of the Dallas Cowboys. He had the Chargers and the Broncos going over the posted total. And it's three times bigger than his Thursday night winner with Miami of Florida upsetting Virginia Tech this past Thursday. So he's on a red hot roll. Craig Davis has his 100 dime teaser winner number two. Two in a row. Philadelphia, New Orleans, the side in total. He's on a 24-12 and 12 run with 50-dime releases. This play is twice as strong. It's just as big as his 100-dime teaser winner he scored with on Saturday night when he had Southern Cal plus the points against uh, Oregon, getting 15, and he had the Alabama-LSU game staying under the posted total. So those are among the hot handicappers that you should be aware of. Listen, guys, you can save uh, $11 uh, off a single purchase today simply by using this money-saving discount coupon code, which for the life of me, I can't remember at this very moment. So bear with me, guys. One second. I told you I'd do this live. No teleprompter, no notes. Football 11. Football 11. F-O-O-T-B-A-L-L -L and the number 11. Put it all together. Get $11 off a single purchase today. Football 11. Football 11. Let's talk about the Eagles and Saints game tonight. Uh, you've got a total price, and this one's sitting around 52 points. You have to play the over, but... You have to have play it with a little trepidation. Listen, we know that the Saints are just dreadful defensively. I mean, they have given up 27 points, at least 27 points in every single one of their seven games this season. They have set an NFL record by defensively allowing over 400 yards to opponents in every single game this season, seven straight games. And we know that offensively, they have scored 27 points in five of their seven outings this year. But they're also coming off that horrible performance at Denver last Sunday night, a 34-14 loss. Now, the defense did its job, giving up 530 yards, 225 on the ground. Um, Breezo struggled, 22 for 42, only 213 yards. And he lost his biggest weapon, Darren Sproles, who's out with a broken hand and will not play tonight. The, way I, the reason I say that you have to approach this total with a little trepidation is the fact that the Eagles, you would think, with their personnel... 
that this team would be able to put the points on the board, especially against this awful Saints defense. But this is an Eagles team that is averaging just 17.1 points per season, guys. Their high water marks in three previous road games. They scored 17 in their season opener at Cleveland. They were held to six points at Arizona. They were uh, scored 14 points at Pittsburgh. Now, you know, does that mean suddenly Michael Vick, who's been under siege and maybe on the verge of losing his job, is suddenly going to be able to put points on the board with the Eagles? Does this mean LaShawn McCoy, Shady McCoy, is suddenly going to be able to be uh, carrying the ball 20 times tonight? Will they actually call his number and let him attack that soft Saints uh, rush defense? You never know with the way the Eagles play call. I mean, that's one of the biggest complaints in Philadelphia with Andy Reid and Marty Morningwig's play calling over the years in terms of their split for pass run. You would think tonight would be an ideal opportunity for them to establish the run. That's what you would think. Now, the other thing, though, that leans me toward taking the over in this contest, the over, is the fact that the Eagles' defense is overrated. It is not as bad as New Orleans. It's not like a sieve, okay? But this is an Eagles' defense that has been unable to get substantial pressure on quarterbacks so far this season. Last year, they led the league in quarterback sacks with 50 of them, playing that wide nine defensive front. This year... They have nine sacks on the season. Nine sacks on the season. I mean, last week they were coming off the bye last Sunday at home against Atlanta, the Falcons, with a brand new Eagles defensive coordinator because, remember, during their bye week, they sacked Juan Castillo and promoted secondary coach, the former interim coach of the Miami Dolphins last year, Todd Bowles, to defensive coordinator. All the Falcons came out and did was score on their first six possessions at Philadelphia en route to an easy win, 30-17, to that wasn't nearly as close as the final score indicated as the Falcons were up 20 24 7 in halftime of that contest, and the offense 392 yards. And again, they basically took the second half off in that game. All that being said, I still think the over is your only play that you can make in this game tonight. It is still relatively low. If you think about it, if the Eagles have been doing anything offensively this season, based on New Orleans defense, based on the fact that it is still Drew Brees playing at home, this number probably would be closing, uh, approaching 57, 59 points. So I look at it as a bargain basement price on the total at 52. Now let's talk about the NBA. I thought about a couple of different free picks to give you here tonight. I was leaning toward taking the Sacramento Kings at home, their home opener, after an 0-3 start on the road, taking on a Golden State team that hasn't gone 3-0 to start the season on the road in something like 18 years. But the fact is, Kings have just been shooting the ball miserably so far this season. They've been out-rebounded by 12 boards a game. Golden State has been successful. They've been hitting the rack. And they won three out of four in the series last year. So instead, I'm going to head to the new Barclays Center in Brooklyn. And I'm going to take the New Jersey Nets, minus the seven and a half at home against Minnesota. A Minnesota team that's one and one on the season, upsetting Sacramento, beating Sacramento in its home opener, then getting drilled uh, by the Toronto Raptors north of the border yesterday, 105 to 86. Still minus Kevin Love, still minus Ricky Rubio. Remember when Rubio went down with the injury last year, Kings lost 20 out of 25 games to close the season. And tonight, they might not have J.J. Barrera available as he uh, has concussion-like symptoms. He scored a uh, 21 points in the season opening win against the Kings. So, I like the Nets here in this spot. Uh, they're coming off a 107 to 100 win over uh, Toronto, those same Raptors on Saturday. Brooke Lopez had 27 points. He's healthy after missing most of last season with the foot injury. Deron Williams, 19 points, 9 assists. Joe Johnson, overrated free agent in terms of being overpaid, but still a nice 14 points, 5 boards, 4 assists in the contest. The bench really contributed for New Jersey in that contest. 32 points, 19 rebounds. Reggie Evans, uh, uh, coming off the bench for 13 rebounds against the Raptors. C.J. Watson, a steady 15 points in relief at the guard spot. So I think the Nets can pull away and extend the margin of victory and get the cover in this contest. And as you know, I've been red hot with the free picks. So guys, you now know who's hot. Jeff Benton, Anthony Red, Chris Jordan, Scott Delaney. They have all made you a fortune. You have a coupon code, FOOTBALL11. That'll save you $11 off the uh, uh, any single purchase today. And you have a couple of free picks. The Saints-Eagles over the total. And you have, uh, in the NBA, a free pick on the New Jersey Nets. So go forward. Go make money. And I'll talk to you again on Tuesday.